Hello, how are you on this Monday? I wish you God's blessing upon you and your family as we worship our Lord Jesus this holy week. Thank you for joining us and worshiping together. I want this uh, recording to be a helpful tool as you meditate upon the suffering and the precious love of Jesus Christ this week. The passage of scripture I'll be reading from this evening is from Luke chapter 22. I have the PowerPoint here for us, and I'll read the Word of God. Luke chapter 22, verses 29, 39 to 53. And he came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. And when he, had came, when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he had rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Rise and pray that you may not enter temptation. While he was still speaking, there came a crowd, and the man called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He drew near to Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? And when those who were around him saw what would follow, they said, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this, and he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests and officers of the temple and elders who had come out against him, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Amen. Our lives have many situations and problems, right? Uh, we need to take care of problems, of, of bills, of finances, of family health. And if you have kids, you need to uh, raise them up in godly wisdom. And uh, to be frank, we're used to problem solving. When something comes up, you are, uh, you are used to and good at even, probably, uh, taking care of business. But what if everything comes due at the same time? The rent is due today, tax documents are due today, your, your work project is due today. How could you deal with the stress and the pressure of issues in your life? Especially if there are very, very difficult issues that uh, each of them require special attention. I'm not talking about how do you solve your problems in life, but I'm talking about how do you deal with the pressures of life. For a normal person, there probably are two ways that people usually deal with these things. Stress, in particular. The first is people would um, set it aside, let it aside. They do it this by maybe some people alcohol, others entertainment, still others would sleep over it and hopefully it goes away. But the problem is it doesn't go away, it just delays the problem. The second way is God's way and that way is to pray, uh, pray to God and see what he does. But the difficult part of number two is the fact of prayer is hard. That is the difficult issue. It is not easy to pray 
to God when the answer seems slow and you have little faith. It takes a lot of work to pray. So we have this problem. How can we, you and I deal with the issue of pressure in life every day, stress in every day life? Tonight, we look at a story of Jesus, how Jesus dealt with the stress, the pressures of life. He takes us tonight to his prayer meeting. Hence the title of today's message, the, uh, Jesus, the prayer of Jesus. And we see two different people, Jesus and the disciples, two different groups of people, how they reacted to stressful situations and how the outcomes were vastly different. And hopefully, as we listen to today's uh, sermon, we get to be encouraged to pray like Jesus in very stressful situations. Let's go into the story of the book of Luke. We find Jesus in a tight place. His life is coming to an end, literally. The, God, the time God had given, the God the Father had given him to spend on this earth, to the ministry, is almost expired. The disciples don't seem ready. They are weak in faith, but ready or not, the time has come. In a little bit, in a little while, Jesus would be arrested by the authorities, Jewish authorities. Yes, they had been playing a game, mind game. They were pursuing Jesus, finding, trying to figure out a way to arrest Jesus and put him, condemn him to death. Now, the time was now. They caught up to Jesus and they were coming for him. Jesus was probably, in our terms, under tremendous pressure and stress. And the disciples also sensed this uneasiness about their master and the situation was a bit different from before they saw they felt even things kind of closing in on them and on that night jesus leads them to a special place and that place is a place of prayer look at with me in verse 39 jesus came out and went as his was his custom to the Mount of Olives. He went to this place called Mount of Olives or Gethsemane. It was a, so to speak, park uh, outside the city of Jerusalem. It was a place where people would retreat. People would hide, so to speak, from public view to have a respite, to recuperate. And Jesus wanted to relieve his stress, this pressure that was building up on this very night. And he invited the disciples to come too. The disciples followed him, it says in verse 39. And he gave them special instructions. Verse 40. Pray that you may not enter into temptation. Jesus knew that uh, there were other ways to alleviate the stress that was building up right now. And he was encouraging the disciples to pray with him, to choose God's ways, not man's ways. We see the intensity of Jesus' prayer in the following verse. We find in verse 41 that uh, he withdrew from them a short distance and knelt down and, pray, and prayed. This is uh, rather uh, interesting because Jews would normally pray standing. They would stand up and you know, raise their hands and, uh, and pray to God, but Jesus was on his knees. It was a very intense moment for him. He was very st under uh, much stress. He needed God the most at this time. And let's go on, uh, read, continue to read the scripture. And Luke shows us the content of Jesus' prayer. He says, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Jesus, he mentions his problem to God. His father. What was it? If you are willing, remove this cup from me. He is telling God, God, would you take care of this problem? Make it go away somehow. He mentions this prayer. But Jesus knew that his prayer was powerful. Usually when Jesus prays something, it happens, right, son of God? He knew his prayer was powerful. So he corrects himself and he says, Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. 
Jesus prayed that God's will will be done. It wasn't a much agonizing prayer, it seemed like, because uh, it says angels came down from heaven to support Jesus. 43, uh, it says, there appeared to him an angel from heaven strengthening him. I'm reminded of Moses' prayer when, he was, when they were fighting the Amalekites. Uh, and uh, Aaron and Hul lifted up the, the arms of Moses to help him pray. And maybe Jesus, in his most stressful time, physically and spiritually, even an angel from heaven came down to help Jesus' prayer. We, in, we indeed find Jesus' prayer very excruciating. It says, verse 44, Being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. How much would you, do you have to pray in order to have your, your sweat drop? Big droplets like blood, thick blood. Jesus was immersed. He was intense in praying to God. He was letting God uh, take care of his situation. He wanted God's will in his life. Now Luke goes on and uh, shows this contrast of another group of people. Jesus chose prayer, but Jesus' disciples chose something else to release the stress that they had. Verse 45, and he rose from the prayer, Jesus rose from prayer. He came to the disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. The disciples had chosen, they had chosen to sleep through it, sleep over it. If we sleep over it, somehow it will disappear. All this agony, this sorrow, this fear is going to go away. Although they probably never said it out loud. Their bodies were, chose sleep, to sleep over the situation, the problem. But Jesus encourages the disciples, encourages them to follow his example. Why are you sleeping? Rise and pray that you may not enter into temptation. Temptation of what? Temptation to choose man's method of releasing stress. Because it's not going to solve anything. Well, you can choose whatever method to get rid of stress. You could pray like Jesus. Or you could sleep over it like the disciples. But the results tell us which worked, right? Let's look at the results. What happened to Jesus and the disciples? Fate caught up with Jesus. 47, while they were still sleeping, speaking, there came a crowd. And Judas, one of the twelve, one of the disciples of Jesus had betrayed Jesus. And he came close to Jesus and touched Jesus on the cheek with a cold kiss. How did Jesus react? Was he furious? Was he disappointed? Maybe he was disappointed, but he wasn't furious. He wasn't startled. He wasn't afraid, the least. In fact, he said, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? He stood his ground. He confronted the situation and he confronted Judas. Now, how did the disciples respond to this startling, shocking scene? Well, one of the disciples at least thought of doing something. They had to react. And verse 49, those who were around him saw what would follow. They said, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And before they heard the answer of Jesus, this disciple took the sword and slashed the right ear of the high priest, of the servant of the high priest, to which Jesus says, stop. He stopped them from using force and he healed the ear of this servant. The disciples had lost it. They were uh, surprised, they were perplexed, and they were startled. But Jesus still, he stood his ground, 53. He says, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs when I was with you day after day in the temple you did not lay hands on me but this is your hour the power of, of darkness Jesus does not reject he does not refuse arresting arrestment 
he in fact says, this is your hour. And this is the power of darkness. And he submits to the will of the people and to the will of God. I want to ask you this question. Are you in any way under this time of darkness? Are you in a stressful situation where the stress is up to here and everything is catching up with you and you don't know what to do? Just like Jesus and disciples, you probably have two choices. One choice would be God's way of praying, of prayer. Second would be to sleep over it, to um, forget it over entertainment or intoxicating your body. But we see today from today's scripture what the results, the stark difference of the results of those two methods, what those methods are. Jesus' method was to pray. And we find one important fact as a result of Jesus' prayer. Through prayer, Jesus was able to confront the situation and he was able to take lead in his situation. Prayer is not avoiding the situation, it is confronting the situation. On the other hand, the disciples, they chose man's way, easier way, the quick and fast and kind of, you know, let it, let it do what it, whatever it does kind of way. They chose sleep and they reacted in fear and startle and also they reacted in the most cowardly way. We find in state, uh, this week's scripture how disciples were overwhelmed by their situation and circumstances, not leading the situation. On the other hand, Jesus was able to withstand the arrest. He was able to stand his ground during his torture and he was able to uh, finish his ministry on the cross even to death on the cross it is jesus encouragement from today's scripture for us to choose jesus way of prayer not man's way of procrastination instead of readily reaching out for our cell phones in stressful times. Luke is encouraging us to put our hands together in prayer and go to that pray, place of prayer to our Lord. Because that place is the place that truly gives us relaxation and true spiritual rest. Jesus is showing us his most difficult moment in life. And he's trying to prove to us that Prayer wins. Jesus' prayer, the result of Jesus' prayer was that Jesus was victorious. Yes, he was under stress. Yes, he, was, he had to go through the painful road onto the cross. But it was all going according to God's plan. And Jesus, he was victorious. He was able to take charge of the situation. He was able to stand his ground. Yes, prayer wins. Jesus invites us tonight, just like he invited disciples 2,000 years ago. He invites us to pray. Do we hear the same thing that Jesus told his disciples? Rise and pray that you may not enter temptation. Enter into temptation. Rise and pray that you might not enter into temptation. Are you tempted to procrastinate? Are you tempted to just hope it goes away? Or use man's method and see, kind of wait and see what happens tomorrow? Or are you willing to take God's way and pray on the situation? How can we pray? How, what, how did Jesus pray? Jesus prayed for the will of God. Prayer is not focusing on the problem. Just because you're praying doesn't mean you're really praying. Sometimes we pray and we just think about a problem and situation, how we could figure it out and how we could solve this. No, not that kind of prayer. Prayer is not focusing on the problem, but focusing on God. Not my will, Lord, but your will. It is a time of aligning our will to God's will. At least that's what Jesus did. When we let Go and let God, as they say. Let go of my methods. Let go of my timing. Let go of my 
desired results and say, God, I desire your timing. I desire your method and I desire your result regardless of whether I like it or not. Prayer is a time to align our thoughts to his, to his will. Uh, you probably have heard the news since last week of the um, big container ship that got stuck in the Suez Canal, right? This uh, huge uh, container ship, this uh, shipping, uh, this uh, company that got stuck in the Suez Canal in Egypt. You know, they say that about 15% of world commerce, uh, world trade goes through this route. And uh, there was uh, some error or, or wind, I don't know. This huge uh, container ship got stuck. It has 20,000 containers, container boxes, and so it wasn't easy to get it out. So I read that, um, you know, many tugboats try to push it, push it out, get it unstuck from this difficult situation. But, you know, they got it unstuck. They got the, the, this huge ship free uh, today, in fact. And I read carefully how that was done. They waited until the tide uh, was going down, going, going out from the canal, in fact. So they were waiting for the low tide. So when the tide was coming out from the Suez Canal, they used the tugboats to work with the tide and pull the, this humongous ship out from its stuck place. And you know what? It worked. You know, this uh, huge commercial uh, container ship, it came out and it's free. As I read this article, I was amazed. You know, all these small tugboats, all these man, man effort, they are, it is something, it is powerful, but it's nothing compared to the power of nature, of this tide, water, pulling this humongous ship out. Just so, like so. Our efforts are like small tugboats. But if you and I are going through God-sized difficulties, stress that are beyond our imagination, only God can get us out. Let's pray Jesus' prayer this week. Amen. Jesus' prayer was letting go and letting God, even if it's not my method, not my timing, not my result. Can we sincerely pray this holy week? God. Let your will be done in my life. I let go of my ways. I let go of my results. And I let you take charge. And as a result, I pray that your week, in fact, your life, will be free, set free by God from the stress of life, from the pressure of trying to get things done, pick matters into your own hands, that stress to be released and God would have his way and his will will be done this week. Amen. God bless you, brother and sister. I hope you pray and let God take control of your life. Amen.